One of the important limits to evaluate is sine x divided by x as x goes to 0. Let's find it numerically first, then try to verify our answer algebraically. There's just one problem we have to address. How are we measuring x? For example, suppose x is measured in degrees. Let's find the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x divided by x numerically. And so we could try some values of x close to 0. And making sure our calculator is set to degree mode, we'll calculate sine x divided by x. Now, all of our x values here were positive, so let's take a look at what happens if we use negative values. And there's certainly some trend here, and so this suggests that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x divided by x is uh, about 0 0.01745. On the other hand, suppose x is measured in radians. Let's go ahead and find that limit numerically. So again, we'll pick values of x close to 0, positive, and negative, and evaluate sine x divided by x. And with our calculator set in radian mode, we find and this suggests the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x divided by x is a much nicer value, 1. And here's the important thing, the limit seems to depend on whether we're measuring in radians or in degrees. Now, since the radian limit is nicer, it's 1 instead of some decimal number. Let's always agree, in calculus and beyond, always measure angles in radians. So let's take a look at a limit. Suppose that theta is somewhere between 0 and pi halves. So theta is a first quadrant angle, and let's go ahead and draw our unit circle with our angle theta. Again, if it's not written down, it didn't happen. Let's go ahead and label some points. Our center, O, and the point B, where the terminal side of the angle intersects the circle, and this point, X, where the circle intersects the x-axis. And we get a couple of important figures. First of all, if we drop the perpendicular down to the x-axis and label, we get this triangle, O, A, B, Next, we have the sector of the circle, OXB. And finally, if our tangent extends to the terminal side of the angle, we get triangle OXY. Now we can see geometrically that triangle OAB is smaller than the sector OXB, and the sector OXB is smaller than the triangle OXY. And we can calculate these areas. Triangle OAB has area 1 half base times height, and since this is the unit circle, our base is cosine theta and our height is sine theta. And so the area will be 1 half cosine theta sine theta. Now this sector, the area of a sector, is going to be proportional to the angle itself, and as long as we're measuring in radians, the area of that sector is going to be 1 half theta. Remember, this is a circle with a radius of 1. And then finally, this triangle OXY, the area is 1 half base, that's 1, times the height, and this height is tangent theta. And so the area, 1 half times 1 times tangent theta. Now we can simplify this. If we multiply everything by 2, that gets rid of that fraction. And if we then divide by sine of theta, we get, and so now I have theta divided by sine of theta squeezed in between two expressions, cosine theta and 1 over cosine theta. Now, if we want to stay in the first quadrant, as theta goes to 0 from above, our limits will be 
1 for the outside function, which means that this middle function is squeezed in between the two of them, and so the limit as theta goes to 0 from above of theta divided by sine theta must be equal to 1. Now, since nothing really changes if theta is negative, we also have the limit as theta goes to 0 from below theta divided by sine theta equal to 1. And since the limit from the left and the limit from the right agree, it follows that the limit, no plus, no minus, is equal to 1. Now, one very important thing here, this limit is equal to 1, but our inequality does not hold if we measure in degrees. And in particular, this middle inequality, this area of the sector, is not going to be 1 half theta, but it's going to involve a constant multiplier. And if we wanted, we could find the limit if we measure angles in degrees, but why would we want to? Now, we actually wanted to know the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x divided by x. And the thing we know is that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x divided by x, well, that's really the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 divided by the reciprocal x divided by sine x. The limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits. The numerator doesn't do anything interesting. And the denominator, we just found that limit. It's equal to 1. And so we arrive at an important conclusion. If theta is measured in radians, and it should be, then the limit as theta approaches 0 of sine theta divided by theta is equal to 1. And we can use this limit in a number of cases. So for example, let's say we want to find the limit as x goes to 0 of sine 3x divided by 5x. Now, if we let theta equal 3x, then as x goes to 0, theta goes to 0 as well. And so our limit can be rewritten. And while we could have done something with a 5x, let's leave it in place. Remember, what we know about is the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x divided by x. So we would like this to be sine theta divided by theta. And the thing to remember is you can get anything you want as long as you pay for it. So here we want a theta in the denominator. Well, that's a 3x, so let's just put a 3x in the denominator and we'll pay for it by putting a 3x in the numerator. Now, our 3x and our 5x multiply, so it doesn't matter which one goes first. So let's put the 3x in the first denominator and the 5x in the second. The limit of a product is the product of the limits. Theta is equal to 3x. And we can remove the common factor of x in our second limit. And now we have a familiar limit and a limit we can simplify. And our limit is three-fifths.